Brand new gear and brand new fragrances to discover. But in 2022, which fragrances stood out to me the most? Which ones did I enjoy the most? Which one gave me like that visceral reaction like, fuck man, I wanna wear this one again. This is it, this one slaps. So let's put you on to a couple of the fragrances that really stood out to me in 2022 and let me know if you had some of the same choices. Let's roll my motherfucking music so I can put you on to some of my favorite fragrances of 2022. Blessed morning, my beautiful peoples. You know who it is. This is your boy. C to the U to the B to the A. Now, these are based off how I felt. Not so much how much I wore them, because some of them I wore maybe once, maybe twice. No more than like three or four times, to be honest with you. But there's some fragrances that really stood out that made a, an amazing impression. And these are the ones that I want to share with you guys. Like, these were like some of the bangers. Now, these aren't going to be all of them. I might do a part two. But I want to give you an introduction of some of the fragrances that absolutely just tickled my hymen in 2000. 22 and the first fragrance is I'm absolutely sure that it's no surprise to anyone it's Amouage's Royal Tobacco this one drove me ape shit. Love at first sniff. This one did everything I wanted and more. Cecile Z, which is my favorite perfumer, definitely did not drop the ball when it came to this fragrance. A lot of people will share my same sentiment and this beautiful, smoky, dark, somewhat coffee, chocolatey vibe with this pipe tobacco smoke really just blew my doors off. Love at first sniff. It even won some awards and just accolades all over the fragrance community of how much people really enjoyed this fragrance. It is a stellar piece. It, it's just masterful. In 2022, this one blew my balls off. Next one. Talk about discovering something at the tail end of the year that really just instantly brought me back to a place like, why haven't I showed this joint love throughout the years? Out of sight, out of mind. That's pretty much what it is. And this one is from the House of Perfumes de Marley. And I'm gonna try to really reel this one in this year. And that's Nissian. Just an incredible spicy amber woody fragrance that just blew my balls off once again. Unfortunately, it happened to be towards the tail end of 2022, but it's a brand new year and new opportunities to wear this fragrance. It's solely a cold weather fragrance with mild versatility on chillier spring nights, but it hits gingery vibes, it hits woody vibes, it hits florals, it hits citric, it hits amazing spice and amber. That's really what this is. Not to mention the performance factor of this particular fragrance, that it just hurts my soul that I had to rediscover this at the end of 2022, but it's still chilly in the East Coast. So Nissium blew my balls off in 2022. Please try this joint. Next one. Now this one was an absolute love at first sniff, and it's not just a fragrance at this point. The particular house itself, or at least the ones that I have smelled by the house of Mizensir, have been amazing, but this one was the first one, and it just blew me away that you can do a fresh oud just like the perfect oud from Mizensir. I never thought that you can really execute a bright, beautiful, deep, fresh oud fragrance that is super wearable without those barnyardish animalic notes that you usually get from oud. Now, what I mean by barnyard and animalic, because I've always been around the farm, living in the city, oud isn't the most easy to wear in its most natural state. It's really strong, it's very abrasive, the wood just smells rotten and old and wet, and has somewhat of a mild B.O. mixed with I took a shit on a piece of wood. Essentially, all of the animals from Alice in Wonderland sat on a tree stump and fecaled all over the joint, letting it marinate in the wood, and that's what you get the true essence of oot. At least that's what I've gotten. So for Alberto Morillas to pull out a fresh option that's super wearable, completely versatile, signature scent worthy, it blew my doors off. So 2022, this was an amazing fragrance. Next one. This one was a complete shock. I've butchered this guy's name like three times. Clearly I don't listen to rock music, but Tony Iommi's Monkey Special from Zhirzhov was a complete experience. Booze and chinola, or a passion fruit, with a deep leather nuance and that creamy caramel. An amazing fragrance, amazing. Love this joint. The way that this joint plays off of my skin is damn near magical. 
perfect for the fall and winter seasons. Performance is outstanding, scent profile completely unique. And I don't know how it turns into like this rock star element, but what I can tell you is that this shit is a rock star off my skin. This one blew my doors off in 2022, and I heavily recommend you guys to sample this joint next one. This next fragrance, I didn't anticipate enjoying it as much as I did, and really got a lot of polarizing reaction, leaning more towards the positive aspect, and that's Tom Ford's Ebene Fumé. An incredible designer incense. It's stellar, mass appealing. Who can make an incense mass appeal and very sexy? Tom Ford could. If you can do advertisements of half naked men and women on New York City billboards, make it socially acceptable, you can definitely pull a rabbit out of your ass and concocting a beautiful, incense dark, luscious fragrance like Tom Ford Ebene Fumé. I just need a minute with this joint. Just smelling it right off the cap just does enough for me, just to know that this is just a banger. Just try this out, and I love that it's accessible at major department stores that you can go test this out and do yourself like 15 sprays to see if this is your type of vibe. It's leathery, it's resinous, it's smoky, it's kind of creamy in a way. It's dark, it's woody, it's mysterious, it's got this holiness about it, it's smoke action, it's deep, it's amazing, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful release by Tom Ford. Definitely blew my doors off in 2022. Heavily recommend you to go to Sephora, Neiman, Blooming, wherever the hell you can, spray it a couple times and see how this joint works for you. Next one. This other designer fragrance was an amazing shock. Salvatore Farragamo La Comedia. That chili and tanka, oof. Bitter orange, sour, sweet, sexy, mass appeal in kind of the space of a latent-ish, if I were to give it some sort of comparison in the niche space, but a beautifully wearable fragrance. Like, this is really what introduced me to this whole Tuscan Creations line. It made me want to explore more from this line to see if they hold water to this joint, because this joint is a banger. Beautiful first impressions, love the scent profile off the skin, only got to wear it twice, I believe, and it was just perfect. I didn't have to overspray, it was a very light spray, had a beautiful scent sillage around me, and really blew my doors off in 2022, so introducing me to that Tuscan Creations line. So, La Comedia for a Salvatore Farragamo, banger, next one. As far as the cheapy options are concerned, I thought this one from the House of Latafa was one of the best, if not the best, discoveries that I had in 2022, and that's Kismet which is an Yves Saint Laurent tuxedo clone. Shocker, I like an Yves Saint Laurent tuxedo clone. But this one was super affordable, great performance, beautiful scent profile, definitely a great alternative, if not slightly better than Rocha's, in my opinion, because I feel this one was catered directly to go after Yves Saint Laurent as far as the scent profile. Rocha still has a little bit of its own characteristic to it. So if you're looking for an Yves Saint Laurent clone that really goes after the Yves Saint Laurent scent profile, then Kismet was a great option that I discovered in 2022, and I absolutely love it. Next one. This one was an explosion. A super banger, loved this joint once I smelled it by a line that I absolutely think is one of the best is cohesive designer lineups in the game. And this one is Roberto Gavalli Womo Golden Anniversary. Blew my sack off. Love this shit. Hits all the factors that you're looking for. Mass appeal, sexy, sweet, dark, date night, cozy, warm, spicy, mass appeal, clubby. All of it, all of it. It can go all of it. You can even wear this joint signature scent worthy. Beautiful scent profile. Excellent release by the house of Roberto Cavalli. It didn't feel repetitive to the other ones. They all have such a cohesive position and play their line accordingly that I thought that this one was a great addition and absolutely loved it in 2022. And finally, for this part one, which I can absolutely do a part two, is this fragrance, which I'm late to the party in, and I don't mind being late to the party. I don't wanna be on the same bandwagon as the other content creators, which we generally Really fall into that same bandwagon when new releases come in and shit like that. But Desire Toxic did amazing off of my skin. Emmy Kalev really killed it with this release, and I understood why by later on I started to see that there was a hype train for this fragrance that clearly I'm late to, but it's a super sexy release. I absolutely love it. My wife clearly felt some other type of way, but that's her problem. Fruity, sweet, dark spicy, black currant, cinnamon. The cinnamon really pops off on my skin in this fragrance. Still warm, very sexy, very inviting fragrance. Mass appeal as fuck, beautiful date night vibe. I just feel it's a well-balanced fragrance. It's bright, yet dark. It's spicy, but like spicy and cinnamon spices with a little bit of like a nutmeg kind of flair in here. Then it's got that tonka, cardamom, bergamot, citric, sour, sweet, 
fruity, spicy, woody, musky. What's there not to like? It's a beautiful scent profile. I highly recommend you guys try it if you haven't tried it already. I don't recommend once again to blind buy any of these fragrances, especially if you can't really afford it. Like you don't wanna have 500 different niche designer fragrances that are plus 100 bucks and then end up not liking it and feel like you're stuck. If there's an opportunity for you to test these joints out, highly recommend it. But these are just some of the ones that blew my balls off in 2022. If you want a part two, feel free to leave it in the comments below. I love y'all motherfuckers from the heart. 2023 is gonna be an amazing year for all of us. And I'll see y'all bitches next time. I hope it brings you happiness, success, and wealth. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I love y'all motherfuckers from the heart. And I'll see y'all bitches next time. You know it is biggest in the game. Go to mrcubano.com for all your Cubano needs. Smooches. Top of my mom's crib. Yeah. It's long since you never get in.